welcome back to another what's for dinner video or welcome if you are new my name is Veronica and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some meals that I fixed for my family this past week we tried three new recipes that were absolutely delicious so I hope this can give you and your family some meal inspiration let's get to cooking first up I fixed crock pot creamy tomato basil chicken I started off by adding six boneless skinless chicken breasts to my crock pot this was the first time that I have ever fixed this and it turned out really good. I was really impressed and especially with the creamy sauce in this, it was delicious. I then added in a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes in tomato juice. A 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and two teaspoons of minced garlic. I then place my lid on my crock pot and I let that cook on low for six hours. During the last 30 minutes of the cook time, I got one cup of heavy whipping cream and I added one tablespoon of cornstarch to the heavy whipping cream and I just mixed that together. I then added the heavy whipping cream and cornstarch to my crock pot with the other ingredients and then I just gently stirred that around. By this point, the chicken is super tender, so you have to be really careful or the chicken will fall apart. I then added some fresh basil that I had chopped up on top of all of those ingredients. I then placed my lid back on my crock pot and I let that cook for the remaining 30 minutes. I also fixed some roasted potatoes to have as a side. In a large bowl, I had eight potatoes that I had diced up into one inch cubes. I added four tablespoons of olive oil. I am using russet potatoes because that's what I had on hand, but you can use any kind of potato that you like. I then added just a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. I then added five tablespoons of Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning to that. And then I just mixed all of that around to make sure my potatoes was well coated in all of those ingredients. I love this seasoning. I use it on pork chops. I've used it on vegetables. It's really good on broccoli and now I'm using it on potatoes. This was actually the first time that I had used it on potatoes and it turned out really good. I then poured all of my potatoes onto a large sheet pan that I had lined with aluminum foil and sprayed with some nonstick spray just to make for easy cleanup. And then I just spread my potatoes on the sheet pan evenly to make sure they wasn't stacked on top of each other and that way they could cook evenly. And then I placed them in the oven that I had preheated to 425 degrees and I baked them for 35 minutes. And this is what the chicken looks like whenever it's finished cooking. It was so good and that sauce was also delicious with those potatoes. And here's my plate. Next, I fixed crock pot Salisbury steak. I started out by placing two pounds of lean ground beef into a large bowl. I then added in one egg yolk, a fourth of a cup of minced onion, a third of a cup of panko breadcrumbs, three tablespoons of milk, 
a fourth of a teaspoon of minced garlic, and some salt and pepper to taste. I then mixed all of those ingredients together by hand. And then whenever I got all of those ingredients well combined, I then patted them out into patties. I ended up with six patties. I then seared the patties in my cast iron skillet for a few minutes on each side just to lock in all of those flavors and it also helps hold the patties together in the crock pot if you sear them first. After I got all of the patties seared, I then moved over and in a large bowl, I added in one pack of brown gravy mix, one and a half cups of beef broth, two tablespoons of ketchup, two teaspoons of parsley flakes, and one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I then mixed all of those ingredients together until they were well combined. I then added in one small sweet onion that I had sliced up and gave it another good stir. And then I placed all of the patties in the bottom of my crock pot if you like mushrooms, you can add mushrooms to the bottom of your crock pot and then place the patties on top of the mushrooms. We don't like mushrooms, so I skip that step. But if you like them, you can put them on the bottom of your crock pot. I then poured all of my other ingredients on top of the patties and then I placed my lid on my crock pot and I cooked that on low for five hours. After five hours and once my patties were fully cooked, I then removed the patties from the crock pot and in a small bowl I mixed together 4 tablespoons of water and 2 tablespoons of cornstarch. I then poured the water and the cornstarch into my crock pot and then I just stirred all of that together and I let that cook for an additional few minutes just until that sauce thickened up. Once the sauce had thickened up, I then placed my patties back into my crock pot and then I spooned the sauce over the patties and then they were ready to serve. And this is what the Salisbury steak looks like whenever it's completely finished. And I also picked some mashed potatoes, some broccoli, and some Rhodes dinner rolls to have as a side. And this meal was absolutely delicious. This was the best Salisbury steak that I have ever had. Next up, we have Mexican chicken spaghetti. I started off by preparing half of a 16 ounce box of angel hair pasta, and I just fixed that according to the package directions. And then whenever the pasta was finished cooking, I then just took that and drained all of the water off of it. I then added in two cups of chopped cooked chicken, two cans of cream of chicken soup. This was the first time that I have ever fixed chicken spaghetti this way, and it was good, it was different. Um, it's not your traditional spaghetti or your traditional chicken spaghetti, but like I said, it was good and we did enjoy it and it's nice to have something different every once in a while. After I got both of my cans of cream of chicken soup added, I then added in one cup of salsa. I use the Great Value Mild Salsa, but you can use your family's favorite salsa. I then added in one cup of sour cream. one tablespoon of taco seasoning, and one cup of Mexican cheese. I then stirred everything together until everything was well combined. This would have been a whole lot easier to stir if I would have just mixed the cream of chicken soup, the salsa, sour cream, cheese, and taco seasoning in a separate bowl and then added it to the pasta and then gave it a good stir. But like I said, this was my first time making this so I am learning as I go. 
Once everything was well combined, I then sprayed a large baking dish with some nonstick spray, and then I added all of my pasta into the baking dish, and then I just spread that in there evenly. I then topped it with about a cup of Mexican cheese. I then sprinkled some dried parsley flakes on top. I then covered my baking dish with some aluminum foil and then I stuck it in the oven that I had preheated to 350 degrees and I baked it for 25 minutes. And this is what it looks like whenever it's finished cooking. Like I said, we did enjoy this meal. It was nice to have something different than your traditional spaghetti or your traditional chicken spaghetti. And as you can see, it looks really good. And here it is in my bowl. This night for dinner, I fixed baked ravioli. I have made this on my channel before. It's very easy to make and it's delicious. My family has been requesting that I make it again, so here we are. I start off by cooking just a little bit less than a pound of ground beef. And then whenever that's finished cooking, I just take that and drain all of the grease off of it. I then return it back to my stove top and then I add in one small sweet onion that I had diced up. I then add in all of my spices. I start off with a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of dried basil, a half a teaspoon of ground oregano, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. I then add in one teaspoon of hot sauce and one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I then mix all of that together and I'll let that cook for about five minutes. After five minutes, I then add in one tablespoon of minced garlic and then I just stir that together and let that cook for an additional minute. After that's finished cooking, I then reduce the heat to low. I then take a 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce and in the measuring cup, I pour three fourths of a cup in that and I just set that to the side and then I pour my remaining marinara sauce in my meat and I just stir all of that together. I then add a half of a cup of half and half to that and I mix all of that together and then I remove that from the heat. I then add my three fourths of a cup of marinara sauce to a large baking dish and I just spread that on the bottom. I then take a 20 ounce bag of refrigerated four cheese ravioli, or in this case, I had to use two 10 ounce bags, and I add a layer of half of that ravioli on top of the marinara sauce. I then add half of my meat mixture on top of the ravioli. I then sprinkle some mozzarella cheese on top of the meat. I 
I then just repeat those layers one last time, adding a layer of ravioli, meat sauce, and my remaining mozzarella cheese. I then covered my baking dish with some aluminum foil and then I stuck it in the oven that I had preheated to 350 degrees and I baked it for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, I removed it from the oven and then I removed the aluminum foil and then I stuck it back in the oven on broil for just a couple of minutes just to give the cheese a little bit of a brown color. And this is what it looks like whenever it's finished cooking and this is so good and it's very easy to make. That's it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.